So we're now going to look at what happens when we place a dielectric, which is a non-conductor, between two capacitor plates such as these ones. But before we do this, I want you to recall a couple of points that we've already seen. So we've seen that when we place a dipole into an electric field, it will align with the electric field. Now polar molecules have a positive end and a negative end, so they have a permanent dipole moment and align very strongly. In nonpolar molecules, we can polarize them. The electric field polarizes them, giving them a positive end and a negative end, which also aligns to cancel out the electric field. The other point I want you to recall is that when we placed a conductor between two plates in a capacitor, it decreased the potential difference between the two plates and hence increased the capacitance. So now let's consider placing our dielectric material between the two plates. Now in this case, the electric field which the two plates are applying are going to induce an electric field inside our dielectric. So the molecules inside the dielectric are going to align with the electric field and they're going to do so in such a way as to in reduce the amount of the electric field. So we can actually describe this with an equation. We can say that the electric field is equal to the electric field without the dielectric there. So we'll call this E subscript zero minus the induced electric field, which is E subscript induced. And remember that the induced electric field is proportional to that applied electric field, to the E zero, which is creating the polarization. So this effect's not going to be as extreme as it was for the metal, where the induced electric field completely cancelled out the electric field. But it is going to be there, and it is going to have an effect on the capacitance. So to describe dielectrics, we usually use something called a dielectric constant, which tells us basically how strong that dielectric is. So the dielectric constant tells us how much the capacitance changes, we can say that the capacitance is given by the dielectric constant, which is represented by the Greek letter kappa, times the capacitance without the dielectric there, which we represent by C subscript zero. So to give you an idea of the kind of values that we're talking about, vacuum has a dielectric constant of one, paper 3.5, silicon 12, water at 25 degrees, 78.5, and then there's some special materials with really high dielectric constants. So strontium titanate, for example, is around about 310, and barium titanate is around about 1200. So one way of thinking about the dielectric constant is as a modification of the permittivity of the system. So the permittivity describes the ability of a substance to store electrical energy in an electric field. So for a vacuum, we've seen that we have epsilon naught, and we've seen that this is related to Coulomb's constant through k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, if we consider a region filled by a dielectric, then we can modify all of the equations containing an epsilon naught by replacing epsilon naught with kappa epsilon naught to describe what's going on there. So for example, the potential difference equations, the electric field equations, those types of things. Now materials with a high dielectric constant have a lower potential difference for the same amount of charge stored on them. And this is desirable as each material has a breakdown potential, which we can write as V max. If the breakdown potential is exceeded, then the dielectric will break down and form a conducting path between the plates. So every dielectric material has a dielectric strength, which is the maximum electric field that it can withstand without breaking down. For air, this is around three times 10 to the six volts per meter. Once this electric field is exceeded, sparks will jump between the plates, discharging them. Let's have a look at an example problem now. So the question is, a dielectric with dielectric constant kappa equals 7.3 and dielectric strength 8.0 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter is inserted between parallel capacitor plates with an area 2.0 meters squared and separation of 1.0 centimeters. 
Part A, what is the maximum potential difference between the plates? Part B, what is the capacitance? Part C, what is the maximum charge that can be stored on the plates? So to answer the first part, we need to calculate what the maximum potential difference delta V between the plates is. And that is going to be the dielectric strength times the separation of the plates. So in this case, it's eight times 10 to the six volts per meter. And then there's a one centimeter separation between them. So we multiply that by 0 0.01 because I've converted centimeters to meters. And this gives me 8.0 times 10 to the four volts is the maximum potential difference between the plates. So that's part A. Part B then says, what is the capacitance? Okay, so we know that for a parallel plate capacitor, the capacitance is equal to A epsilon naught on D. Now, because this one here has a dielectric in it, we replace epsilon naught with kappa epsilon naught. So we just need to multiply it by kappa. And now we can substitute everything in. The area of the plates is two meters. Epsilon naught, that is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. Kappa is 7.3. And then we divide by the separation of the plates, which is 0 0.01. It's this one centimeter here. And solving that on the calculator, I get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 8 farads as the capacitance of the capacitor with the dielectric in it. And then part C says, what is the maximum charge that can be stored on the plates? So to answer that, it's useful to remember that the electric field between capacitor plates is given by sigma over epsilon naught. So in the case when there's a dielectric, we multiply that by kappa. And sigma, that's Q on A. So this is Q over A kappa epsilon naught. Now we know what the maximum electric field is. That's what the dielectric strength is. So that's up here. And so we can say, well, the maximum charge Q max is going to be equal to E max times A kappa epsilon naught. And these we can substitute in for. So we've got eight times 10 to the six times two times 7.3 times 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. And solving that, we get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs to two significant figures.